Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another Gun How video. Okay, so today we are going to talk about concealed carry and try to give you some tips, tricks, and insight to save some money to streamline your path to concealed carry. I want to use my experience as a firearms instructor and 10 years of shooting to help more new shooters. I'm going to share with you products, strategies, and resources, even answer questions you may have. This way, I can help you save time and money. Now, I've noticed there's a lot of concealed carry videos out there that are kind of, you know, for example, top 10 carry tips or all the things you didn't know you want to know about concealed carry. But I haven't seen any videos explaining how to get started and what to do. When I first started, I wish I had kind of a roadmap or just something to get me going and guide me uh, because it can be uh, a big undertaking. I want to talk about fears first. So when you first start carrying, you think everyone is looking at you. That is you just being paranoid, doing something um, you haven't done for the first time, being out of your comfort zone. It's obvious only to you because you know it's there most people aren't even aware of their surroundings they're not looking for it they have absolutely no idea they're far too oblivious also if there is anything printing it's it's just assumed that it's you know a phone or a wrinkled shirt who knows people don't just jump to Oh no, that's that little tiny bulge is a firearm, a gun. The second thing is that a properly holstered firearm will not just spontaneously go off. Modern handguns have safety mechanisms in place where this won't happen. This whole process is really all about confidence. Okay, you just got to do some things that build your confidence up. If you're truly having a hard time concealed carrying in public, I suggest just going to the range more and shooting. That alone will just build your confidence up. Uh, concealed carry also inside of your house on a daily basis. Okay, this is another way just to build up confidence. You get used to it being there. Nowadays, I, I don't even notice it um, when I'm carrying. So... It eventually becomes like your wallet or your keys. It's just it's just on you and you have it. A third thing, uh, carry at first with no round in the chamber. From my experience, this is the most nerve-wracking thing to a lot of people. Knowing that they have one ready to go in the pipe, they your brain thinks, you know, it's just, like I said before, spontaneously going to go off. It will not do that. But eventually, you do want to carry with a round in the chamber, but that's for another video. Holsters and carry styles. This is a big decision. Uh, a lot of people don't have the money to buy a bunch of different holsters, so they find themselves at a roadblock and kind of don't know what to do. So I'm going to go through... Uh, a few of the common options and give you examples you'll see them I'll probably roll them up here on screen uh, so you can see what they look like so six o'clock carry this is a deep kind of carry small the back I usually use this at uh, weddings or events when I wear a sport coat it's very minimal uh, it's at the small of my back and it's it's pretty comfortable sitting down, standing up. If this is something you like and it works from you for you, go ahead and try it out. Four o'clock carry or strong side carry. This is how I started to carry. This one is good if you're kind of bending over a lot. Uh, you have a little more mobility. I stopped carrying like this because on my body type it printed a little bit too much and it also was starting to wear a hole in the seat of my car and in my office chair so it it's all about the setup you have um, different body types different clothes different belts that all can make an impact on 
how you carry it. So if this works for you, uh, I'd say go ahead and try it. This is definitely um, one at the top of the list, and I still do from time to time. Next is outer waistband, right on your hip. This is what most people are familiar with when you're carrying a gun. Uh, a good slim outer waistband holster is a great option, one that kind of sticks close to your side. I utilize this mostly when it's cold outside where I can kind of have a, you know, you can have a sweatshirt or jacket on that kind of is a little bulkier. I do this a lot when I'm hiking and it is possibly the most comfortable, at least for me. Appendix carry. This is how I currently carry 90, 95% of the time. This is what everybody is mostly carrying right now. It's, for me, very comfortable in this location. It's also the best way to protect your firearm being right in front of you at your waistline. It is also the most concealable for my body type. It does take a little time to get used to. I highly suggest uh, this type of carry. Um, definitely look into this one. Off the body or bag. Uh, this is, you know, your typical carrying in a purse, carrying in a backpack, sling bag, something like that where it's off your body. I only do this when I'm working out or, you know, you're at a pool where you're wearing swim trunks and you don't have any pants on. Basically, when I can't can't wear a belt, this is how I carry. I carry in a bag. You can honestly use any holster, uh, put it in the holster, slide it in the bag. Anything that fits in there will work fine. Just make sure it's in a hard-sided Kydex holster. Let me do you a huge favor right now, and do not use Uncle Mike's holsters. You're welcome. Okay, you're welcome. Clothing is a thing that's commonly looked over when concealed carrying. Belts are really important. You're going to want to get a stiff, rigid uh, belt that fits. If you don't get a stiff, rigid belt, It'll be all floppy, so you're going to walk around with a gun flopping around on your side. It doesn't hold tight to your body. I like to get about an inch bigger than my normal size of belt to accommodate for the extra girth of the gun being inside your waistline. For shirts, pretty much any shirt will work. You just got to experiment for yourself. Sometimes I like to wear an undershirt and tuck that shirt in so it helps keep the gun off my body. Um... If it's super hot day, you could also just wear a normal t-shirt. It all depends on, you know, your body style, okay? Another thing, you'll see a lot of people wear, you know, it's the common style to wear plaid shirts and flannels. Uh, this is because they're a little bulky and they help really hide uh, printing because of the patterns. But generally, any shirt that fits you should work. You're just going to have to do a little bit of experimenting. As with everything I talk about here, do your own research, okay? Check your own local laws of where you can and can't carry. Um, you don't want to be going to jail for something, you know, you just weren't educated about. So I highly stress, do your own research and you'll be good to go. A great resource for this is the USCCA. They have a entire page dedicated to your state that you can go click on it it lists out every gun law where you can and can't carry in your state and even reciprocity with other states and most importantly of it all make sure you are training okay practice drawing do a few reps every night for like 10 minutes just that little bit will make a huge, huge difference. Also, make sure you, before you do this, clear your gun. Um, I can't stress that enough. Unload it, clear it, check it, double check it, triple check it. Get the ammo out of the room. Whenever you're practicing drawing or dry firing, uh, it's a smart habit to get into. 
Also, I've heard of a myth out there that dry firing is going to somehow hurt your gun. That is completely false. I probably have more dry fires than actual rounds through my gun. And it's completely fine. That does not happen in modern firearms. A little tip, you can record yourself and then rewatch the video to critique yourself. You know, watch yourself draw. What does your form look like? Uh, it may sound weird, but it has actually helped me a lot and helps a lot of others. So just record yourself, rewatch it, and you can really pick up on a lot of things. That's all I got for you. Please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps out. Let me know if I missed anything, if anything's inaccurate, if you disagree, go for it. Uh, I will be updating this in the future. So thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time.